Day five, switching to Arch Linux. Could go better, that's for damn sure. Damn you, Arch Linux. I let you into my house, and then you come in and do this to me after I said so many nice things about you. Oh, can't believe it. Ah, oh, God. Bless. Ah, ah. Okay, I've calmed down now. I've just had that happen and sorted it out after a kernel update. Uh, my hardware definitely didn't like the latest kernel uh, at all. And uh, as you saw in those videos, which the uh, audio video, I don't know how well they were actually caught up on that, but... Uh, oh, jeez. I had to go in and fix a lot of stuff and roll back my kernel. And uh, thank God I had uh, LTS installed so I could go into that in a stable environment and fix most of this. I also had a couple versions of the kernel installed. Uh, or, you know, if you don't have that, definitely get that. And if you don't know how to do that, find a guide to do it. Because, oh man, I'd been reinstalling right now if I didn't have that. And if you were on a rolling release, I'd, I'd have to say this is an absolute must. Because... Ugh. So what ended up happening on this kernel, uh, I updated to it, something with VirtualBox and then one of its dependencies didn't like, I think it was the VBox hosts or whatnot, it embeds into the systemd modules and then the systemd modules won't load with this new up-to-date kernel for my specific system. Uh, long story short there, it would finally boot to desktop, but I'd have almost no functionality. And it was just not fun at all. Uh, you know, I, I you know, I wanted to wait till day six before making my third in the series of five videos on this 10 day adventure. But uh I couldn't. As you know, I, as you saw those, I I booted up and I was like, I'm just gonna go raw on this and just tell you how I was feeling at that exact time. It wasn't good. I didn't like it. Uh, this can happen. So if you're on a rolling release on Arch and you're constantly just hitting, mashing that update button when it pops up in your system tray, well, eventually this will happen to you probably. Uh, I had run a lot of different things with it. Again, mine was more, I think, isolated around VirtualBox and how I installed that. Um, a lot of people, I think if you were running more vanilla, that would have had nearly as many problems, but I have a lot of packages loaded on my system. Uh, another thing I was reading is, hey, if you do install a bunch of AURs, or, you know, packages from the AUR or uh, a lot of packages from Pac-Man in Arch, you can break your install eventually just by building too many packages and they couldn't resolve dependencies. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today, what you could do to avoid it if you want to do a traditional Arch install. Uh, if you're a beginner, again, I'm still recommending Manjaro or uh, uh, Archos, or I'm saying that wrong. Um, I'll, I'll link it below, or you'll see it in the comments for sure. Um, but those versions of Arch are a little more tailored and help a uh, beginning user so they don't just end up building everything under the sun and end up breaking their Arch installation. Um, I didn't exactly do that. Mine was a little more targeted, but I did install a lot of packages. So uh, not entirely unexpected. Uh, I, I stress test this big time. In, in 10 days, I do probably more than most users do in a year in Arch. So I am doing a whole bunch of tests. In any given day, any given hour, I am doing something completely different. I don't just find my workflow and then go for it. I find how to do my certain thing and then I try and do it 20 different ways because you just never know which way is the fastest way. And that's true with anything in IT. If you're getting into IT, I highly recommend you never accept one solution to a problem always try to find 20 different solutions because guess what? That one solution won't be there forever. So uh, just, you know, pro tip on that. But uh, Arch, today was a bad day. It was just not a good day and I'm not happy about it, but I wanted to talk about how to avoid specifically this or installing too much packages right now. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. 
and that is when you get on a you know you start downloading and installing packs packages on the AUR and you do a hundred packages yeah I know <laughs> I did a lot of packages way too many but if I'm gonna break something I want to break it you know I, I always aim and strive to break something in the first week I get something um and uh you can avoid this even if you needed those hundred packages which i don't i went back through and uninstalled quite a few of them i went ahead and ripped out my uh virtual box and finished my upgrade to the kernel and it's fine now and then every, most of my other stuff works just just peachy uh but i could have avoided this whole thing uh just by using flat packs or snaps uh i don't like snap snaps a canonical ubuntu product if you're using Ubuntu, uh, I highly recommend, hey, you can go ahead and stick with snaps, but I like flat packs just because it's a bit more universal, at least in my opinion. Everything I've read, most users end up, you know, leaning towards flat packs. So I don't like to give too much, uh, too much uh, market share to, to one individual. Ubuntu, I think they have a great distribution, but at the same time, I, you know, I'd rather see, uh, one specific out of these two instances of flat packs and snaps, I'd rather see flat pack take the cake and everyone start using it and just see snaps fade away and everyone just adopt flat pack because it's universal. Um, it's meant to be, uh, it's developed by GNOME and it's just, I think a far better product than snaps. Uh, so let's get into what they actually are. So what they are, are containers, uh, those containers, basically have all of the entire program and all its dependencies baked into that one container. What does this mean? It means you could upgrade those dependencies or use the dependencies that are the best version for that program. That means you could have one that uses the shared dependency between two different programs. One could have this version of the dependency. This one could have another. Uh, it causes a lot less conflicts, makes your system far more reliable, and you don't have to worry about little things working it up in my instance now i think about it with virtualbox yeah it's still been screwed but uh that's neither here nor there for the most part flat packs will help uh solve this issue of shared dependency mess ups that cause a lot of crashes and, and inconsistency or in just general instability uh, i highly recommend it i'll go ahead and link uh in the description down below to flat packs so you can guys can go install that use those when you need i highly recommend using them for your day-to-day -day programs instead of using your package manager because as you've seen in past videos i'm not a big fan of having a ton of different package managers and seeing something like this come come to be you know in just the past couple of years they've really gained a ton of traction and i'd love to see flat pack win it all and everyone just use flat packs um it does obviously bloat your system a little bit compared to the normal, um, but I would like to see people use just like a base install uh, uh, with the, the main packages that you need and then use flat packs on top of that. I think, uh, you know, that could give the application people a little bit more uh, leeway. I'm not saying, hey, make crappy applications, but... Uh, it would give them a little bit better uh, consistency across the board and make installs for noobs far easier because they control the dependencies and they don't have to constantly be looking at their support forms going, hey, what version of this dependency are you running because there's known issues with this? Uh, all that kind of gets solved with flat packs. But that's it in a nutshell. And if you want like a full on tutorial, there's plenty online. Um, but again, check out their official website. Let me know if you have any issues. Uh, again, check out the Reddit, uh, Chris Titus Tech. If you do have questions or issues there, post them. Uh, go ahead and make a post and say, hey, I'm having issues installing flat packs and this is the error I'm getting or something like that. And then uh, I could look in it or another community men member could look at that. I just launched that yesterday, but um, please check that out. And that is it for day five of Arch. It's kind of funny. My day five of switching to Linux was also... Uh, something like that where I wasted a couple hours with. This was actually uh, only about 30 minutes worth of troubleshooting, thankfully because of the multiple kernels I had installed through the install guide. So if you ever do go with Arch, 
make sure to grab the LTS at a bare minimum, and then try and do a roll up, roll, have at least a rollback for three kernels deep. Uh, that ensures that you can always roll back to an older version should you have issues. Uh, the LTS is just a good idea just to make sure you can always get into your system no matter what happens to those three kernels. But that's it for today's video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.